I'd like to welcome Simon Cousins with us. Hello, hello. Hey. Hi, hey. hello. So I'm, I'm pleased to have you with us again. You were here last time and, and as panelist, this time uh, as, a, as a speaker. Um, yeah. Simon is, uh, is a British computer programmer, freelance font engineer, and um, typographic tools developer. He has lived in Japan, Australia, and is now back in uh, his kind of home UK <laughs> in the, on the islands. And he is also creator of the open source um, typesetting engine SIL, uh, quite a powerful tool, multiscript uh, layouting also author of fonts and layout of for global scripts and of course a very avid collaborator with um, probably a bunch of you have had the pleasure to work with Simon already. Um, and I hear that you keep rabbits. I want to see pictures. <laughs> um, oh, okay. <laughs> hey, cool. Okay. Yeah, how many? two how rabbits at home at the moment. <laughs> how many? Just two at the moment. Ah, just two. All right. So, so they are really like like pets, like cats. And so, instead of cats, you have you have rabbits. Yeah, I, they hop around the house, and sometimes they're in the study. <laughs> it's it's good fun. Oh, that's cute. Okay, great. And you also carve letters still in stone, or uh, just about. I'm trying one. You can maybe just see behind me that oh, yeah. I'm working on at the moment. I'm wow, doing a relief uh... carving for the first time, so it's an experiment. Yeah. Wow. How how does that go? Is it, uh, how does the tool adapt to the script? I'm, well, I'm still learning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. That's great. Well, um, so we've been talking about Git and collaboration and sim simultaneously uh, working on the same files. Um, Simon has uh, developed a tool, a little plugin for glyphs, a crit party, and we'll be playing a, a little video where he explains about it and afterwards there's again plenty of time to to ask questions and uh, yeah and to hear more so movie up hi my name's simon and i want to talk about a little utility that i created last year it was the end of May, it was lockdown in the UK, and I read this tweet by Keva Gamma. And she was talking about the, the sadness that she felt, the grief that she felt of the MATD program in Reading being run under lockdown, and how uh, they felt really robbed, uh, that they couldn't do all the, the normal things that they'd wanted to do, that they'd paid for to do. Um, but most of all, that they were not able to work together in the studio. They were not able to get together and have feedback and critique from one another uh, and just, just be alongside each other uh, for that time and how that important that was. And that kind of got me thinking. Um, I knew, you know, you can't fix that problem. There's no way that you can make that better. But I did wonder if there was some way that uh, through technology we could have a better collaborative working experience. As she said, you know, Zoom calls are not not good enough. But but is there something that we can do in the font editor to overcome some of this frustration? And the result was uh, a extension for glyphs called Quit Party, which enables people to. Uh, have their critiques, have their collaborative work together in the editor online. So let's have a look at it. Let's see how it works and how it might be able to help a little bit in this kind of situation. When you've got the Crit Party extension installed, there'll be an extra item in the edit menu called Crit Party. To start a session, you would open Quit Party, type in your name, 
and choose a password. And then hit connect. This gives you a session ID. So you then start Zoom uh, or whatever and share that session ID with the person that you want to talk to. Next, your friend is going to do the same, but they're going to go to the Join tab in Quit Party, type in their name and the session ID that you've just shared with them, as well as the same password that you chose. And they're also going to hit Connect. Then the font gets sent to them, and they can see the same font on their screen as well. Let's suppose that you both decide to work on the letter S. When one clicks on S, then it is selected in both screens, and both mouse cursors are visible at the same time. You can now work together, talk about the glyph, and either of the two users can make changes to the points, move them around, add points or delete points, and they'll show up on both screens. You can have more than two people working on a font at the same time. There's no limit to the number of users you can have. And when you're done, the person who started the session can just save their file as normal. I want to talk a bit more about how it works as well, because I imagine some people might be a little bit wary about sending their fonts across the internet. The technology that this is based on is something called WebRTC, which is used in Google Meet, Google Handouts, uh, Facebook Messenger, Discord, lots of other things. It's a secure peer-to-peer -peer networking system. Quip Party uh, has a central server, but this is only used for negotiating a session. So what happens is the uh, person hosting the session will open Quip Party, and Quip Party will talk to the server and say, please give me a session ID. And it, the server will register the password and the session ID. And then when somebody else comes along, they give the session ID, they give the password, and the server tells them how to contact the other users on that session. And from that point onwards, the server gets out of the way. And any font file data, any interface updates, anything uh, happens peer-to-peer -peer between the two um, users or between however many users you've got. And that's all done over encrypted channels as well. So it's secure, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, your data is not going anywhere apart from the people that you are, you know, wanting to send it to. Um, I hope that's a useful application for some people. I hope it will improve your, world, your, your workflow and allow you to work collaboratively. I hope it will um, help you with uh, getting remote critiques and, and that kind of thing, which is what it was really designed for. Uh, I want to finish with one or two kind of notes. Firstly, right now it is only designed for Glyphs 2. Uh, if you try to use it on Glyphs 3, it will look like it's working, but some things won't quite work properly. Uh, and I would like to get that finished off and sorted out, but to be honest, I haven't quite found the time yet. But that's something that I want to do. Uh, you know, you have to say this is just a tool, uh, it's not going to fix all of the problems caused by uh, trying to work in isolation during a pandemic, um, but I hope it does fix some of them. Um, it's open source, so again, if you've got any concerns about the security, you want to make sure that it does what it says it does, then you can open it up, you can build it yourself, you can even run your own server if you want to. Um, and if you've got any problems or uh, bugs, if you've got any requests for features, or if you've got any fixes that you'd like to contribute, then that is the address there for you to do so. And sort of finally, finally, I just want to say that Glyphs is really awesome. I know that uh, other font editors have got a reputation for being highly extensible, uh, but uh, I Let's reflect on what I have managed to do now with this extension. We have a peer-to-peer -peer networking protocol, uh, interface updates, uh, 
remote changes, all of this is happening through a glyphs extension with no changes to the core of glyphs. It's something that's just been added on the side. And to me, that's a complete testament to the flexibility of the glyphs programming interface. You can do really pretty much anything you want to do with it. Um, so I would say that uh, in terms of ex extensibility, uh, Glyphs is really up there as well. So that's uh, that's my toy. That's what I want to show off today. And I hope it is something that uh, you can find useful. If you do, please let me know. And if again, if you've got any problems with it, uh, we will try to get those fixed for you. Have fun and thank you. Hi, I just wanted to give you a quick update. I recorded this talk on Monday, but since then, uh, Georg Seifert from Glyphs and I have been working together, and I'm very pleased to say that Crit Party is now available for Glyphs version 3, and you can get it from the Glyphs plugin manager today. So, have fun. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Simon, for this... Uh... Well, for, for this uh, kind of uh, voluntary work, you know, it's amazing. Uh, all these these developers, they um, are very keen and on improving, and it's wonderful what you guys do for us. Yeah, I mean, for, for me, it was almost like a challenge to see whether it was even possible. Um, so uh, I was very pleased to find out that I actually could do that. Yeah, and have you, have you used it? Have you used it yourself with, in a project with somebody? Um, I haven't, but I know that there are people who, who have done and uh, been able to, to sort of do critiques online and things like that. So. Okay, that's great. I mean, I imagine also with with students in general, for anybody, um, actually it's something I, I could have used in my workshop just a couple of months ago. I uh, yeah I somehow was not was not still aware of it or I forgot. <laughs> well, that's why but, yeah. I wanted to to do this talk today and sort yeah. of introduce it to a to a wider audience. No, it's great, super. I I see in the chat that uh, there are people who used it and uh, really like it. Let's see if there are any other questions. Uh, yeah, there's one question, but I don't think you can you can answer that because uh, they are asking if it's uh, available for Glyphs Mini. That would be more yeah. a question for Gaina, I guess. Or uh, well, yeah. unfortunately, I don't think so. I don't think Glyphs Mini will allow you to use plugins. Okay. So no, you would need the full version for that. Ah, uh, where's the server? Okay, there's a question. Um, that uh, you said it uses a server. Where is the server? Is it something that is going to work long term? Um, it's a server that I run. It's uh, based in London, but it uh, has you know my my website and my email and everything else on it. So as long as I'm around, it will it will continue to work. But again, this is open source. The source code for the server is available, and so if you want to run your own server, you can do that as well. Right. Okay. So so. You are responsible for for running it and terminating it as well. That was another <laughs> kind of question. Okay, no. right, right. So let's see. Do we have any more? Um, yeah. Uh, how would you manage? Uh, no. How would you imagine the use of Crit Party for specific me methods for growth-minded feedback critique? For example, the deserts method. Any other methods you are aware of? Um, I've not come across this. Do you know about this one, Monica? No, no, I, no. I, I don't. There, 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 <laughs> I don't there's, a, there's a link. I mean, <laughs> there's a to link be honest, on I'm, I'm really more on the technical side. I'm not a designer and I'm not an educator, so I don't know. I just kind of saw that there was this uh, need and this ability to... Um, to, to work remotely, and I thought, well, let's have a crack at it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's up to you guys to find out um, <laughs> how best to use it in education and development. Okay, great. Now, so, Lucas, you check it out, um, or you, you can talk later direct, directly with, with Simon on Vito. Uh, another one, does it affect performance much? For example, if two people wanted to co-work, over the course of several hours in a more passive sense, would this be a sensible solution or would it be more for intensive close working on specific glyphs? Yeah, good question. I, it doesn't 
seem to affect performance very much. I haven't tried to leave it running for a long time, uh, mm-hmm. but I don't think there's anything that would stop it from, from working like that. You'll have to give it a try and see. Okay, great. And actually, um, a different question um, apart from Crit Party. How is Brexit affecting your work life? <laughs> If at all. For me, it's it's not really a problem because uh, my clients are uh, international anyway. Right. And I, I, actually, they're not EU clients. So maybe that's uh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, why it's not really affecting it. But uh, it's uh, it's affecting my mood, but I don't think it's affecting my work. Right, right. Which is worse, probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, another one I, I kind of was curious uh, to hear... In, in your experience, what's the most difficult script to work with or to kind of collaborate on in your, in, in your, in your experience? Um, I think the, the, the most difficult one to deal with, I've been working on um, the Urdu script, mm. uh, mm-hmm. which has a lot of kind of different combinations uh, so much so that we've had to write a lot of software um, to do the work for us instead of trying to right. work out all the different rules that we need to do. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's been, been challenging. But I'm moving more and more in that direction of uh, getting the computer to do the work and to write the rules for you uh, with all of the scripts that I've been working on. Cool. And you've been mainly working with Arabic or Index scripts or...? Yeah, I'm doing uh, more on Indic scripts at the moment, Uh, a bit of Arabic, a bit of Myanmar, um, and yeah, all sorts of things. Right, okay, exciting, exciting stuff. Perfect, thank you very much, thank you, and we'll see you later on the panel. Thank you. And now we'll have a very short break, kind of five minute little stretch, stretch your legs, and get a coffee or something uh, heavier. And we'll see you in about five minutes. Mm-hmm.